It's time for week two action of the Pro Mazda Championship. Welcome to Road America. All coverage today is on Racebot TV, streaming live on iRacing Live, as qualifying will be coming up next. Don't leave us. Located near Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, in the USA, we welcome you to Road America, which hosts week two action of the Pro Mazda Championship. All coverage today on RaceWatch TV, streaming live on iRacing Live for round two of the championship. As we said, last week we're at Mid-Ohio. We remain in the US for what should be a brilliant day of Pro Mazda action. Once again, around the 6.5 kilometers, four miles exactly of Road America. 14 turns around this circuit. Nine of those to the left, the other five to the right around this clockwise layout. We are using the road course layout without the bend before the turn 11 kink. You can see the bend at the top of the road map there, the little white part. We're not using that. We're going around the yellow section. The fastest lap around here by Jerome Hogg, our three-time champion over the past few years. We're looking around the same lap times here today in the low two minute range, although it could be slightly slower due to weather considerations partly cloudy out there and looking forward to well sunny skies i reckon pretty light and we're currently in qualifying to begin our coverage here today it's currently martin arnoldus who leads the timing sheets with a two minute four point one one nine ignacio tesari right behind only a hundredth of a second behind so very very close there and eric jaeger and alex mckellar head the second row of the grid and still waiting for more times to come across the line Good afternoon, everybody. Jonathan Simon on hand in the commentary booth alongside Hugo Luis, who's in production behind the scenes. And as we mentioned, we're back. Pro Mazda Action. It's on Racebot TV, streaming live on iRacing Live. We had some very spectacular events last time out at Watkins Glen to end the season. We had Ava's race against cancer, all for a good cause during week 13. And that also took place at Road America. So we're able to gain a little bit of an insight into how different drivers will bear this afternoon but we know our last season champion he's back gabriel perez he's about to cross the line here i'll have a look if this is to begin a lap or end the lap and this is to begin a lap and he just nipped the grass there slightly he's heading towards turn number one at road america let's have a look nice very simple for Gabriel. He's looking to defend that championship for season three. 
through turn number three tightens up on the exit so he's that car looks on rails at the moment looks like a good lap so far that wonderful black and blue livery and i love the rear wing there mr gaming at the back you'll see it throughout the afternoon here he comes through the moraine sweep and turn five this is the section of the racetrack where you have to watch it on the exit and ironically he almost lost it so that's cost him a lot of time he'll need to finish the lap he's actually lost it he's heated up the tires too much temperatures all over the place and guess what for gabriel perez he will start no greater than seventh at this point in time incredibly so we're gonna have to keep an eye on a few other drivers out there at the moment martin arnoldus has improved his pole time actually a two minute 3.816 the only driver into that two minute and three range. Incredible stuff. So, so Martin, he's uh, done a lot of hard work behind the scenes for this series. And I'm sure he's much, but it's all much appreciated throughout the community. So he's rewarding himself by smashing everybody here this afternoon. See if any other driver is going to cross the line. Looks like Jonathan Tussie may cross the line. No, I think the session's over. That was close. Only had a few meters to go. Let's have a look at the grid before we head to the race. So it's Martin Arnoldis on pole position. The only driver in the two minutes and three range. He's joined on that front row by Ignacio Tesari. Eric Yeager and Jake Feynman on the second row of the grid. Followed by Alex McKellar and Will Sutton who will start fifth and sixth. Gabriel Perez, our season champion from season three, start will actually start from seventh alongside Ronnie Chapman. The rest of the top ten, Matt Anderson and Marcelo Caruso. Only four other drivers set a time this session. That was Kim Short, Vincenzo Taramina, Nixon Montero, and Mark Kostoski, who will start 14th. The other drivers you can see down the grid from 15th onwards did not set a time in qualifying, and that will not bode well for their confidence unless they deliberately did that. So we're heading to the race this afternoon. 14 laps of action around Road America. Plenty of overtaking spots here today. You'll have a look into turn one. And what about the downhill braking zone into turn five, just after the Marine sweep. So that's something to, uh, to attempt for the drivers. Turn number eight after the hurry downs is also possible. The carousel after that, that is not an overtaking spot. You'll be very brave if you can get it done into there. And then finally, Canada corner, turn 12. That's also a great look for any of these drivers to make a passing move. And for the likes of Jonathan Tussie, Tom Wedgwood, Ferry Taylor, Andres Bertoni, or Maxim Dettili Brisboy, who will start last, those drivers will definitely need to look at those overtaking spots because we're not focusing on strategy. Here we go, though. Ready for the race. 14 laps of action coming up. Arnoldus on the front row, Tessari joining him, 630 meters from pole position to turn one. The engines rev, the lights illuminate. And we go green for 14 laps of racing. Brilliant start by Arnoldus, he's going to defend from Tessari who starts on that outside line. It looks like the front two rows seem all stagnant at the moment, even the front three rows too. So no position changes heading into turn one, a couple of scraps behind, Matt Anderson runs it wide, almost loses it on the apex of turn one. Matt Anderson's dropped down the order, it looks like he's in P10 at the moment and a little bit of a scrap here in front between that Gabriel Perez. He's around the outside just being passed there by the driver of Ronnie Chapman in front as they head towards the Marine Sweep. Look at Perez, he's having a move, but have a look at this. That a battle for P2. Eric Yeager in front, he's gonna make two positions in one corner possibly. Tried to go around the outside of Arnoldus for the lead. Very brave there, but not enough. And so they head into turn six. Everybody's starting to form up here. I'll tell you what, Jake Feynman in fourth position's got a good run here. And I think he just got the dirty air going there into turn seven. Here they come through the hurry downs. So good start, by the way, from the likes of Ronnie Chapman. He's gained two positions. Look at this. Ronnie Chapman under attack from Gabriel Perez. He's going to make a move into the carousel. That is more than brave. That's ballsy. That's almost stupidity. Don't go side by side through the kink. Oh, goodness me. 
And Perez here just trying to find the grip tucks back into the slipstream, going for the inside line, heading into Canada corner. Perez straight pass, late on the brakes, don't lose it. He's going to run deep and have a look at Ronnie Chapman possibly going for the cutback. Didn't have the pace. And so they all continue away here through Bill Mitchell Bend. Then to end the lap at turn 14. This is a very difficult corner in the Pro Master. It looks simple. It's so easy to get wrong. So at the end of the first lap, it's going to be Martin Arnoldus who will cross the line and lead from pole position and a fairly straightforward start. Behind him, it's Eric Yeager, just two tenths behind, having a look here for the lead. Not enough there for Eric Yeager. Tessari's in third. Then it's Feynman, McKellar, Perez, Ronnie Chapman, Kim Short, Marcelo Caruso, and Vincenzo Taramino rounding out the top ten at the end of lap one. Through the back straight they come. So a couple of non-finishers already. Will Sutton, Tom Wedgwood out of the event. So definitely troubles for them. Have a look at the lead here, though. Eric Yeager trying that outside line. Oh, going deep. Who was that? That was Jake Feynman. I think he missed his breaking point. And he almost took out all three of the leaders. Or all two of the leaders in front there of Arnoldus and Yeager, excuse me. But Feynman, you know what? At the end of the race, you'll say that was all scripted. Oh, and there we go. There's a spinner. That was Matt Anderson. So Matt Anderson behind. We saw fun at the exit of turn number five and it looks like he was down the order look at the replay he just lost it all on his own he just got onto that uh, the line that wasn't rubbing up at all missed the apex just by a touch the right hand side of the car is where he lost most of the grip so he finds himself now down in p15 as jake Feynman dropped down the order so Feynman now has made a mistake he's only one tenth behind alex mckellar in p4 and he's under attack actually from gabriel perez Oh, Perez going deep on the brakes around the outside. Brave is Gabriel Perez. This time the gravel takes advantage of him. And he's not able to make up a spot. But very odd there for Jake Feynman. So I have a word that he may have lost it at turn number eight. So just before the carousel. And that's where things just went sour for him. But here's Eric Yeager going for the lead. Yet another time. Arnoldus is so confident. And that's not going to play in the hands of Eric Jaeger. I think Eric Jaeger is more confident heading into turn five. Not this corner. Oh, Arnoldus. Oh, goodness me. He's butchered that breaking point. And collected is Martin Arnoldus. We've turned Road America into an airport. Oh, he's gone flying. Oh, goodness me. Let's have a look at a replay. Oh, my goodness. And he's accepted the blame for it, Martin Arnoldus. I think he just went hot into turn three. Went back onto the racetrack. And that's where he was collected by, it looks like that was Ignacio Tessari. So Tessari also has a lot of damage here. And that's shaken up the leading order quite a bit. So... That's what happened there, and oh man, that was a spectacular sight, I'll tell you that much. So, Alex McKellar behind, he made his way through, had to back off, Feynman too. Well, the order's shaken up here at the top, so it's Eric Yeager in front, Ronnie Chapman behind in second, and Jake Feynman in third. Behind them, it's Nixon Montero, Terry Taylor in fifth. Where did Terry Taylor come from? So... Perry Taylor, I think, began this lap in 13th, and he's currently in 5th. There was another spin behind, if I recall correctly. I saw the timing screens playing up significantly, but guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Only 11 cars remain in this 19-car field. We're only on lap 3. So we'll wait until everybody crosses the line just to confirm this, but... At least anyway, we're having a look here at the number 11 of Terry Taylor, as we mentioned, is in fifth. Right behind is Andres Bertoni. Oh, Bertoni's got a killer of a run out of that final corner. And, well, he's still alongside each other. He might have pulled out of the draft. Not 
too seamlessly, so he's lost the run. But it actually looks like Terry Taylor may have the draft from Nick Samontero in front. Who's going to win this fight for a top five position? Whoa, going deep is Terry Taylor into turn one. Gave me a fright there. But Tony just backing off, letting him through. Looking for the run out of this corner. Turn number three. Oh, car off in front. Who's that? Jake Feinerman. Oh, goodness. Jake Feinerman. This is becoming comical for the leaders. It looks like whoever wants to lead doesn't actually want to win the race. And Eric Yeager still maintains that first position by an even bigger buffer. The replay there for Jake Feinerman. Just lost it all on his own. Got the bump on the curb. No grip there on the outside too. That just unsettles the car. No balance. There is no chance of saving that. As long as he didn't pick up any damage to the car doing that, he could probably continue away quite seamlessly. So back to this battle now for E number four. And or P number three, excuse me now, because Jake Feynman spun, hasn't he? So this is the battle for the final podium position. It's between Nixon Montero, Andreas Bertoni, Terry Taylor. And Terry Taylor looks very confident on the brakes out of these two, but he's lacking a bit of pace through, especially this section of the racetrack. So he's finding himself behind. He needs to get as close as he can to the two in front because they're going to be alongside each other going into turn 12, Canada corner. Brilliant pass from Bertoni. Can he keep it together on the exit? Whoa, almost lost it. Nixon Montero behind, had a slight moment too, so only one position changed that time around. Through the final corner they come, they'll begin lap five next time around. It will be 10 laps remaining as they cross the line. So no position changes. Jake Feynman behind, no in P7. He's in that number 18 Pro Mazda car. And, yep, no move for him. But let's have a look at the battle back out in front. Terry Taylor here. Good run out of turn number one. This is a corner on the racetrack he loves. Heading into turn three. Good stuff. Straight past. Not even a question. And Nixon Montero loses two positions in the space of half a lap. So let's see if Nixon can fight back here and... Make up for it. He's got a shot heading into the Marine sweep. This is a very unstable braking zone. Terry Taylor is just, I was going to say, very confident on the brakes. I think he just missed his braking point there. Picks it up on the exit. And Montero had a look there into six. Oh, they both missed turn seven there. I don't know if that was caught, but... They both just missed the apex of the inside of the corner. It's one of the most bizarre things you can do as a driver, but it's so common. And this has allowed Jake Feynman behind to claw his way back up into the top three. It's possible. He's got the pace. So Jake Feynman from Illinois. He's going to run here out of the king. Come on, Jake, send it up the inside. Do it, Terry Taylor, and break late. No. I think he had no shot there because Nixon Montero was very, very, very on it when it came to the braking zone. Spot on. Hit the braking point. Wasn't affected by Terry Taylor in front. Here they go through the final corner again. So this is draft central, this main straight, because... They could all be alongside each other come the end of the straight heading into turn one. But it looks like Feynman doesn't have the top end speed. Montero probably has the best shot here. Has a look up the inside. Go for it. Nope. Terry Taylor robust on the brakes. As always, although he runs wide on the exit, so does Montero. Those two are alongside each other. Feynman behind. Just prowling. Hunting. Ambushing the both of them. Waiting for the right time to... Make a move, Feynman went for the inside, now for the outside. Doesn't know where to go. Here they go now, this is the battle for P4. Taylor and Montero. Oh, Feynman around the outside, too easy. 
caught Nixon Montero napping. He was too focused on Terry Taylor in front. Took about half a second to rest, and that's when Feynman said, excuse me, I'm trying to make my way, get back up to the podium. And I need you to get out of my way, Nixon. And Jake does exactly that. So Jake's best aim for the rest of this race is presumably to not butcher it all on his own and spin, which is what he did earlier. And if you're wondering, no, there's no such thing as a commentary curse. <laughs> so let's, let's have a look at how this goes. Feynman, good stuff out of the kink. Terry Taylor X. Terry Taylor, excuse me, Alex for the inside line. Feynman, oh, he breaks on the grass. That's going to send him deep. Saves it, though. Whoa, goodness me. Half a second more on the grass. He would have been into the wall. And the 16 spun as well. Nixon Montero behind. Wow. So Nixon Montero behind was under attack from, it looked like, the driver of Mich Marcelo Caruso, and that's what put the pressure on Nixon. Back to the front here, though. Terry Taylor, again. Oh, touches the wall. I swear I saw sparks. And Terry Taylor continues with hopefully no damage. Going for the cutback is Jake Feynman here. This scrap is brilliant. Taylor hugs the inside line and tells Jake Feynman to be a bit stronger than that. What a great scrap here. Although they've allowed Andreas Bertoni in front to gain some breathing room. He'll probably have a bag of popcorn too in a second because he'll be watching this through his mirrors. I hope not though. He's got to focus on keeping that car planted on the racetrack. And if you're Martin Arnoldis, you'll hope that all four wheels actually stay on the racetrack because you got sent flying like an aeroplane before. Feynman through turn number seven. Such a difficult corner. And the faster you get, you jump into a McLaren or even the old Williams back in the day, the dirty air through turn seven was a killer. So... Just to update on our leading battle. No, I was about to do that, but Jake Feynman's ruined it. Thank you, Jake. He's going for the outside line into the kink. Whoa, he's no rubber there. You can see the tarmac's a bit different there. It's more rubbered in on the inside. And that caused Jake to just back off the throttle by just a touch. They both run wide. Whoa, Jerry Taylor almost lost it. Feynman slots his way past. Good pass. Took advantage of the mistake. Marcelo Caruso behind. Joins the fight. The so seven laps remaining it will be as they cross the line. Marcelo Caruso, an absolute horrid run out of the final corner. Don't look at that, kids. He's lost a lot of time. But the battle ahead continues between Jake Feynman and Terry Taylor. This time Taylor elects to go as far away from the wall as possible. Around the outside, on the brakes, into turn one. Terry Taylor, good stuff. Uses the grass a little bit. Probably pick up a 1X and an off track, but he won't be phased by that. Continuing away here. Just looking for... Looking to break away, if anything, from these two behind, but the draft is keeping them in play. Caruso has a run on Feynman, who also has a run on Terry Taylor. Feynman goes for it up the inside. And makes his way past. So easy stuff for Jake Feynman back into fourth. And he probably won't remain there for much longer. Or you might actually prove me wrong. So back to the lead battle. Eric Yeager leads. He leads by 12 seconds in this event. And he's about two seconds faster at the lap than everybody else out there at the moment. Amazing. Ronnie Chapman finds himself in second. And Ronnie Chapman started in eighth. Wow. Onto the podium. But what about Andreas Bertoni? Started in 18th, second last. He's currently in third. Jake Feynman, Terry Taylor, Marcelo Caruso behind him. Caruso's getting closer. 
who makes his way into the top five. Marcelo Caruso started from 10th, Barry Taylor from 17. Oh, Taylor. That's the second lap in a row. He's got very tail happy on the exit of Canada Corner, turn 12. On the main straight now, okay. This is the first time I think all race that I've actually had a time to just relax, calm down and breathe. There are only nine cars remain in this event been brilliant action so after Caruso in six Matt Anderson seventh Nixon Montero who had that spin earlier he's in eighth Marcus Toski with damage is ninth our DNFs at the moment Gabriel Perez our champion from last season Martin Arnoldus we know what happened to Martin pretty sure you saw that out of your backyard doesn't matter what country you're living in he was flying away in the air Ignacio Tassari 12th McKellar short Paramina, Tassi, Maximum, Dettili, Rizvoi, Tom Wedgwood, Will Sutton all out of the event, but this battle continues. Terry Taylor and Jake Feynman. Taylor runs very deep. Oh, he's going to be careful rejoining the racetrack. Not only to keep that car in a straight line, but he's let Marcelo Caruso through. So Terry Taylor is kamikaze when it comes to the brakes. It pays off for him most of the time though, so I don't blame him. It looks like he's dropped off too here, so I don't think he won't be pleased too much if he doesn't finish in the top five, so I think he'd want to fight for it despite starting from all the way down the back end of the order. Oh, Marcelo Caruso. Oh, he's got the grip on the outside. That's incredible, but Jake Feynman, though, he's more than experienced. And he keeps it together on the inside. Terry Taylor joins the fight again. He's gifted one more chance. Oh, through the final corner. Terry Taylor now has a shot at making his way back past Marcelo Caruso. Oh, but Caruso has the drop from Jake Feynman. Oh, three wide. Come on, let's do it. There's a spot view up the inside. Terry Taylor, or through the middle, I should say. He doesn't go for it. And Marcelo Caruso finds his way through. And not only does he find his way through, he slingshots his way through. He's got like almost a second's advantage here on the two. How slow were they through turn number one? really have to be careful if I was Terry Taylor I would not try to fight Jake Feynman through turn number five you want to catch up to Marcelo Caruso you don't want him to break away you want to maintain his toe exactly what Terry Taylor does yeah there is an element to you don't always have to pass the guy in front when it comes to these tactical races through turn number eight here they come the left hander so much importance on mechanical grip through here we're going to be able to apply the throttle and plant the rear end in the carousel you know what i'm not even going to talk about set up around this corner i never figured it out as a driver just got my teammates to do it i don't know i just click things and hope that something makes me faster i'm not that smart So in front, actually, 2.4 seconds for gap to Andreas Bertoni. As Bertoni made a mistake because he was in front by about four seconds at one stage. And so they're slowly creeping him down. Hunting him down is a better word. Just don't make a pass, Jake. Work together. Creep down on Bertoni. You know what they're all race car drivers they're not going to listen to me here's jake Feynman, probably going to have a look at p4 oh he backs off the throttle i think he knows what he's doing here they're actually listening to me 
Good stuff, Jake. And Marcelo Caruso continues. So they can either do the cycling relay thing where they start to exchange on the straight. It's something you see in IndyCar too, especially in the Indy 500. Or they can just not try to pass each other too much and try to make their way back up to Bertoni. But at the moment, Bertoni's got a 2.9 second advantage. So it keeps on chopping and changing. And Terry Taylor's had enough. He's going for the outside line here. And straight past Jake Feynman, he goes into the top five again. Nope. Jake Feynman back up the inside on the brakes. And good stuff. No position changes in the end. Carousel. Have a look on board with him. Let's have a listen to him through these next few corners. Terry Taylor, there will be three laps remaining as they cross the line. of him. Caruso and Feynman battling away. Taylor has the draft too. He made love to the wall earlier and he's possibly going to go up the middle of both of them. That would never end well. He thinks better of it. Whoa, Feynman around the outside. Wow. Robust, confident. Steers in without hesitation and he makes his way past them once again through turn three. Just steers in on everybody else. And that was dangerous too, because that's where Jake Feynman lost it earlier there on the exit. Bounced over the curb again. This time he keeps it in a straight line. Terry Taylor going for P5. And I think the shot at the podium here is all but over. Whoa, squeeze is Terry Taylor right up close to the grass. And on the exit, it's going to be Feynman, Caruso, Taylor, fourth, fifth, and sixth. In front of them, Eric Jaeger now leads by 21.8 seconds. Jaeger was four seconds faster than Ronnie Chapman last lap around. I think Chapman might have made an error there. That's very, very weird. Andreas Bertoni in front. He's ahead by four and a half seconds. So Bertoni, there's no chance at least three are going to catch him. I just keep scrapping away now for P4. That's your best shot at the moment. The drivers in front make a mistake. P7, Matt Anderson, four and a half seconds behind the bunch. Nixon Montero was never able to recover from his spin. He is currently in P8. And Mark Kostoski, who has suffered from damage for most of the race, finds himself 33 seconds behind Nixon. And he's driving a very beaten up Pro Master. I'm sure the police will be investigating that. And it just looks horror to drive at the moment. Feynman, Caruso, Taylor, though. They've given us some delight. Whoa, has Caruso lost it? He has. Whoa, he almost took out Terry Taylor as he swung back onto the racing line. Marcelo Caruso out of the scrap for P4. And then there were two. It's now between Jake Feynman and Terry Taylor. This is the perfect, this is like a scene of the Hunger Games. There's only two remaining. Let's go. Terry Taylor through turn three, right up close to the curb, suffers from a bit of mid-corner understeer. I don't know if he just carried too much speed into the corner, but that looked, didn't look pleasant from my point of view. And so with two laps remaining, Bertoni is only 1.9 seconds behind Ronnie Chapman for P2. So there could be a small battle there, a small battle for big things for P2. And if they do collide, Feynman and Taylor behind could claim second and third. There's only two laps remaining there, so very unlikely, but you never know. Taylor's 
has driven a phenomenal race though, starting all the way down in P17, not setting a qualifying time. Jake Feynman started in fourth, remains in fourth. He had a shot though at P2 and he will be kicking himself after this race. He's had some good fun, but definitely should have got more. He should have deserved more, but his spin cost himself. So looks like now he's got that buffer there on Terry Taylor. But let's have a look. And a man named Eric Yeager says to be one lap remaining as he crosses the line. And he's driven a phenomenal race, Eric Yeager. Started on the second row. Easy start. Very confident in the early laps. Put Martin Arnoldus under pressure. And he's never looked back since then. He's led 11 laps of this event. Arnoldus led the other two. And Eric Yeager's deserved every bit of this potential victory he may achieve over this next final lap. Ronnie Chapman behind him, P2. He crosses the line. He's got one lap remaining too. He's under attack from Andreas Bertoni. Ronnie Chapman's also driven a great race. Started in eighth. Hasn't had the pace, but he may just stay in the fight. For that final podium position, Feynman overtaken by Terry Taylor though around the outside. And that is on the final lap too for the both of them. So Feynman, he's under pressure. No need to panic, but time to get slightly desperate. Feynman on the exit, good run. He's got a shot here to claim his way back up into P4. On the final lap of the event, here's Jake Feynman. Alongside Terry Taylor. Breaking battle into turn five. Downhill braking zone, Taylor always confident in the race on the brakes. And Feynman around the outside has the grip, has the speed. Is he gonna claim that position into six? Confirmed. Sign seal delivered. Postman, get away. Terry Taylor finds himself in fifth. And that may be the end of this battle. We have no idea. We'll keep one eye on it. We know Eric Yeager is coming through Canada Corner now. So through turn number eight, these two come. Terry Taylor needs to stay close here. They're on that non rubbered in line around the carousel. That's not going to be quick. And it looks like Taylor, well, I think he's lost it. There's no chance now. He's too far behind. Let's switch on to Eric Yeager. Week two action of the Pro Master Championship. Dominated by this man. Eric Yeager wins at Road America for week two of the Pro Master Championship. Brilliant victory by Eric Yeager. We talked about his race. Very confident. Very strong. Behind it will be Ronnie Chapman coming close to losing that second spot from Andreas Bertoni, but they will both be on the podium. Chapman in second, brilliant event, and Bertoni all the way from 18th on the grid, from the back, will claim a podium here today in this 14-lap event. Brilliant stuff. Jake Feynman will cross the line and claim fourth, and into the top five is Terry Taylor. Good event from Terry. He started in 17th into the top five confident with that matt anderson comes home in sixth good event from matt anderson and the australian will be pleased with that 2 30 in the afternoon here in australia so you'll certainly be celebrating tonight probably going clubbing with that sixth place result good stuff matt anderson celebrate that for sure marcella caruso eventually heartbreak for him that spin just cost him and he'll only finish seventh montero and kostowski will come home in 8th and ninth. Kostowski's still actually waiting to come to the finish line. But we will have a look at the results in a second. Kostowski, a couple more corners to go. And you see the damage there on that car. Just no chance. The front wing's beaten up. Rear wing, oh, it's all over the place. So Kostowski crosses the line and gets some good points. Good stuff there. Let's have a look at the final results today for week two action of the Pro Mazda Championship. So it's Eric Yeager who wins in 29 minutes and nine seconds. Good stuff from Eric Yeager. Robust, strong race from the man from the USA. Behind him, it was Ronnie Chapman in second who started in eighth. But more importantly, Andreas Bertoni was creeping in close behind. He started from 18th and finishes on the podium. Jake Feynman should have achieved better, but still gets a strong result in P4. He had some brilliant scraps throughout the event with Terry Taylor, who finished behind in fifth. The rest of the finishers here today, Matt Anderson, 
Good stuff in sixth position. Marcelo Caruso with that late spin will only claim seventh. He had a shot though at a potential fourth place finish. Had the pace too. So did Nick Samontero who also spun it at Canada Corner. And Mark Kostoski with the damage. We're watching there at the end. One little piggy comes home right at the end. And those were our only finishes. The DNS today. Gabriel Perez, our champion from last season, unable to impress again on Race What TV, on our Racing Live as well. And out of the event, Inacio Tesari. I'm not going to joke around about Martin Arnoldis anymore. Unfortunate for him. Probably potentially could have won that race, but just lost it all on his own into turn three. Not sure if he lost it on his own. Could have been a slight contact. Wasn't sure there. Arnoldis though claimed that it was his error. McKellar, P13, Kim Short, 14th, non-finishers, Vincenzo, Caramina, Tassi, Maxim de Tilly Brisboy, one of the coolest names I've ever heard. He finishes, or not finishes, 17th, and Wedgwood and Sutton in the early laps were out of the event. So that is it for week two action here of the Pro Mazda Championship on Racebot TV, streaming live on iRacing Live. Thanks to everybody here today. I'm Jonathan Simon, Hugo Luis doing the camera work and production behind the scenes. It's Van Below doing all his work with the cameras. Andreas Werner for hand -worn design. Simon Grossman for our overlay animations and Nick Thiessen for all of Racebot.tv's live timing. This has been a brilliant event here today for week two action of the Pro Mazda Championship. Now, just a couple of notes before we take off. Next week action, we know will take place in the week starting the 26th of September. That will be 18 laps of racing around the Daytona road course. You can get involved on iRacing. Just get to that C-Class license. And you can do anything for the championship you saw here today. Uh, we know our next race for Racebot TV will be in week nine at Suzuka. That will be on Saturday, the 11th of November at 11.45 GMT. So don't miss it. Suzuka, open wheelers, Pro Mazda, perfect track car combination. As always, in just about, uh, I'd say, what is it? Nine, 10 hours time, we've got Racebot race day action along with the iRacing World Championship Grand Prix series. The penultimate round of the series. Can Martin Kronke wrap up the championship He's only got Bono Haas to fight with. Thanks as always to you viewers. And this has been a Racebot TV presentation broadcasted on iRacing Live. Stay tuned. Plenty of action across iRacing and Racebot TV. Don't miss it. We'll see you soon.